Hi there, welcome to this build of a Clancy Aviation 40 inch wingspan Speedy B. And this Speedy B now is almost finished, we're getting to the final stages. And what we're going to do in this video is we are going to fit the servos to operate and we're going to connect them to operate the fin and the elevator. Now if you saw in a previous video, not the last video because in the last video we were fitting the finishing off the nacelle and fitting the servo for the throttle but in the one before that I think it was we actually mocked up the plane and we had a look to see where the natural CG was falling and what we needed to do to hit that sweet spot as specified on the plans to get a good CG for this to fly and the, the outcome of that mocking up and seeing where the natural CG was was the it became very evident that this is quite nose heavy at the moment because we've got quite a big four stroke engine on the front and if we're going to get this to balance which we are without adding any extra weight we need to put the servos for the fin and the elevator right back as far as we can in the fuselage now in the plans i'm not sure if you can see that here but they are quite a way back behind the cockpit but actually we're going to push them back even further and actually that's got a benefit as well because it means we get shorter control rods so we get less uh, expansion and contraction altering our trim and uh, it just makes it more positive but yes we need to get them back as far as we can and allow for the battery as well to be far back because as modelers we want to keep our planes as light as possible and part of that is not sticking a chunk of lead in the nose or the tail to make it balanced balance because we haven't thought in advance about where we can put our electronic items those things like servos and batteries that we can move now before I, I dive in and start fitting these servos a previous video I said I wasn't totally happy with the tail wheel on the uh, fin, the rudder fin, same thing, because it put all the weight onto the hinges and so I'm going to quickly adapt that and I've started just making up a couple of bits and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right well as you can see we've got the spring here for the tail wheel which is actually going into the bottom of the fin and putting all the weight of the landing onto those two hinges we've got here and it's going to stress those and, and could possibly do some damage particularly if we come down heavy on that tail wheel which hopefully we won't but you never know so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fit a tail wheel that i've made up and that actually puts the weight on the back of the fuselage here and you can see i've already set in a piece of plywood there i think that's six mil just a small piece epoxied in and all the weight's going to sit on there and I'm going to put a aluminium plate which I've bent and that is going to just clamp on like that or oh, sorry not clamp on I'm going to screw that on into this plywood I bent the plate at a bit of an angle so that the bar from the wheel comes up at 90 degrees so it or it comes up at least parallel with the hin in, in line with the hinges that's what i'm trying to say so it comes up in line with the hinges all the weight from this tail wheel is on this keeper here and hence transferred to the aluminium plate and the back of the fuselage now this wire is going to bend immediately as it goes through that aluminium plate along the bottom of the fin and then up into the fin hooked up into the fin now to fit this into the fin what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a section here I'm going to cut the old wire that's coming out I'm going to glue in a little bit of plywood like that it needs to be back a bit because of the hinge and then I'm going to cover it with balsa either side and sand it and you won't even know it's there and the reason I'm putting the plywood in it's got a little hole and I will bend this wire and it will eventually go up into the bottom of the fin there like that so out along and down and that will work nicely the beauty of working with balsa is we can cut out bits we can glue replacement bits and sand it really nice 
So that's what I'm going to do and then we'll get on with the servos. Well, I've now got the rudder sorted and I'm really pleased to get it done because I was awake at 4.20 this morning thinking about how I'm going to do this because as I said, I haven't been happy with it so uh, should sleep better tonight. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who, uh, who know just what it's like when you're just trying to work something out or think about how you're going to do it and you mull it over in your mind and the next thing you know you're wide awake. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. But there you go, look. You can see I've cut out the piece here. We've got the metal that goes up underneath and all the weight now is on this bracket and that is lovely and free. You can see just how it's going backwards and forwards. So, I, and I'm going to, when I put the control horn on, I will probably hold it on with some two mil bolts and they will go through that hinge there. So that hinge will not only get glued in, but it will be, uh, it'll be bolted in as well. So, right, well I'll move the camera around and we'll have a look at what we're gonna do with these servos. Right, well this is where the servo is going to be mounted, in this area here, which is nice and clear once the wings and the back of the turtle deck comes off. On the plans it shows the servos round about here. Well I'm going to push them back a little bit more, as I said, right back here, as far as I can really. I'm going to be using two different Emacs servos, and the one is uh, the same as I used on the ailerons and the throttle servo. And uh, that's the information. Hopefully you can read that. If I just hold that there for a second. That I'm going to be using on the elevator. This one on the rudder, because it's got the tail wheel, I'm going to be using just a slightly bigger servo. It's still, still a, a, a quite a small servo compared to standard servos, but they're quite powerful. So I'm quite, I'm quite confident that these will be fine. And I've made up a little bit of a plate, which will go back as far as possible there and uh, can mount the servos in that. I still haven't cut that out as you can see. Now I put them as far to the sides as possible so that I can mount them hopefully with the arms pointing each other and without clashing. So then the control rods will come down the back. I'm going to be using this uh, 2 mil carbon fibre rod, which I used successfully recently on a Tomboy Senior, worked really well. And I'm hoping that I can run this down without them crossing. But I'll get the servos in first and then we'll look at those lines. Another advantage of getting the servos way back on this plate is that I've got the battery and the battery will go here in front of the servos and it will allow me and I think that is far enough back to get this to balance and if I want to I can move it all the way up to the front so but at least that's a good way back I mean the CG is round about round about here I think so this is quite adding quite a lot of weight backwards uh, or towards the back end um, I mean I could put the servos here and put the battery back here, but I don't think that is really required. I think that'd be too much weight, and then I'd have to bring the battery from there right up front here, which, because uh, I wouldn't be able to put it under the servos. So, I'm gonna get that cut out, get the servos mounted, and then we'll have a look at the control runs. Right, I just thought I'd show you the, the plate. Now I've cut the holes out and done a few other things. So, got the servos in there, they're not screwed in yet. You can see I've pilot drilled these with just a one mil drill, just to allow, I don't know where that shows up actually, but rather than just screwing the screws in and splitting the timber, if you pilot drill it, it won't split. And I'm using these hex head screws. They've got a hex, you can use a hex driver on them so they don't slip, and they've got like an integral washer. These are brilliant. So I'll use those. Now I've got a couple of holes here because I'm going to uh, screw that down to the sides of the fuselage. Now, you can see I've put just a little bit of three mil ply under that longer on there, so that the screw will just bite into that, because this is just a balsa, 
316 balsa and I think that with a bit of vibration and movement they could pull out of there. Now on the underside of this, on the back where the screws come through, I've put in, I'll put on a couple of bits of 3 mil ply just to screw down into a little bit more to bite into than just a single 3 mil. On the front I put a strip of timber, this is actually uh, bamboo, it's, <laughs> it's a chopstick and uh, I find that really good because it doesn't split very well and again I've pilot drilled that and that's gone the right the way across because that provides a huge amount of strength now. When I put the plate in without that cross piece and just pressed it, it was a little bit flexible but now it is uh, it's really strong and, uh, and doesn't flex. So I'm going to get this all screwed in now and uh, get those servos screwed down and then I'll have a look at the, uh, the linkages. Right, I'm going to uh, get the rudder done first or the, the fin and I'm going to be using steel instead of the carbon fibre. It's, it's just a lot more practical. They're very short runs, so there's not a great deal of weight in them. They're actually five grams. And if I use the carbon fibre, I've got to glue bits on the end. I've still got the clevises, and I've got to glue other solutions for the servo end. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm probably saving about two or three grams on each one. It's, it's not worth the effort. So I'm going to use these steel rods which are just the right length, they're two mil, threaded that end, I'm going to put a Z bend on that end and at here it's a little bit tight so it allows me to put a bend in it and it will just work so much better whereas I can't bend the carbon fibre. So I'm going to put a little bit of a dog leg here and then thread it through and it will just work so much better. I've got the horn there which will just screw on and it'll, as I said earlier it will screw through the hinge and that just comes through and to the servo here. Nice simple solution. We've got these slots in the back here to allow the, um, if I turn that over, to allow the control rods to come out. What I might do is, is if the control rods only using a small area I might put a little bit of vertical balsa just to so when I put a slot in in the covering here for the control rod to come out it, it doesn't perhaps split all the way down it's just a little bit stronger there so I'm going to get the rudder done now and then we'll see how that works right well I've now got the fin connected up and that's running really smooth and nice and I couldn't have done it really without putting a kink in the wire there so uh, I'm quite pleased I'm not trying to uh, trying to use the uh, the carbon fiber but that runs really nice and smooth now so what I'm going to do now is uh, just connect up the uh, elevator but just a couple of quick points while I'm uh, installing the, the control linkage for the elevator. Now we've put the horn on here where it's strengthened so it'll be nice and strong and secure. Need to make sure these holes for the connection are over the hinge and that will give us equal movement up and down. If it's too far back, too far back, too far forward, then we'll get differential movement and we'll have to compensate electronically for that. So as close over the hinges as possible. Now the fin, I'm at, uh, sorry, the <laughs> tailplane and elevator, I'm actually going to cover and then glue into place. So to allow me to set this up and get it right, you can see I've just put some pins to pin this into place so it's secure. I mean, if I wiggle it too much, it will come loose because those pins aren't going to hold it really rigid, but they are doing the, the job that's needed. Now, I'm bending up a control linkage. To do that, it's really hard to see where the servo is and where it needs to go. So what I've done, you probably can't see, but I've just put a mark on the top of the uh, bottom of the fuselage here, where the control horn is and where the control rod needs to end. And I can see this here. So basically, I'm just lining it up on top or below, <laughs> uh, you know, the, on the bottom of the fuselage like this to get that the right shape rather than trying to look through and bend it, uh, it being really awkward. So it's really easy that way. Just big pair of pliers hold it and bend it.
Right, well, I've now got both the elevator and the rudder set up. So let's see how they work. You can see there's no binding of the push rods here, plenty of room, and we've got a nice smooth movement. And we'll have a look at the back. There we go, and we can see that tail wheel operating nicely. It still needs a little bit of adjustment. To be honest, everything will need a little bit of adjustment when we come to set it up finally. But we've got it set up now so we can get on and, uh, and finish this model. Well, it's really good to get the elevator and the fin all connected up and to get that tail uh, wheel modified because as I said earlier I really wasn't happy about it. But it's really exciting because there's very little left to do to this model and I'm really starting to think about the colour scheme, the finishing, uh, the finishing covering. But we've got one job left to do that I can think of anyway and this is a job that I've been looking forward to for a while. This plane is going to be powered by a four stroke, it's a OS FS26 I've, I've mentioned several times. But what I want to do is try and make a piped custom exhaust system to get some of the oil, the fuel residue exhaust back from, the, from the, the engine compartment and try and keep the model relatively clean if I can. I know it's a glow engine, it's going to get mucky. But I think it will look really good as well, really retro, if I can uh, get this set up properly. So, I'm going to draw this video to a close now, and I hope you found it useful, I hope you found it interesting, and please, come back and see how we get on with that custom exhaust system. Thanks very much for watching.